In this video training, we're gonna look at Tesla options. What about if we think they are overpriced and want to take advantage by selling premium? Stay tuned. Hey traders, warm welcome to you. Okay, so Tesla options. Let's look at this trading strategy. Little series of videos here, all based around Tesla. So bullish theory or thesis, bearish thesis, and now we've got a neutral thesis. Why do we have a neutral thesis, I hear you say? Well, we might look and say, you know what? Tesla's been doing this, yeah? It's been sitting around, it's gone up to 375, everyone thinks it's gonna go, the bulls get so excited, shorts get a little bit panicky, nothing happens, comes back down, sits at 300, goes to 250, back up. It's been sitting in this range, I think it's gonna sit in a range for the rest of the year. So you kind of have a thesis, you go, you know what? I'm gonna work off a December thesis that we're not gonna do anything. We might go up a bit, down a bit, but you know what? We're gonna be exactly the same position. The current price at the moment of Tesla is 300 bucks, right? Your thesis is, you know what? It's not gonna go anywhere. It's gonna close 20, December the 21st, $300. I want to profit from that. So how would you do it? Well, you'd look at the options and you'd go, blimey, these things are expensive. The call option, $300 call option for December expiry is $35. The put option, $300 expiry, December $36.80. Slight difference in the price, but that tends to be the case with, with options. They're kind of biased one way or the other. The put option is kind of portfolio hedge against people who are long Tesla stock price. There's a little bit more demand for that increase in the price. Um, but regardless of that, that's expensive. And these are kind of live examples based on the options chain at the moment. So if your theory is, you know what, we go nowhere, your best bet would be to sell these options. So by selling these options, what are you doing? You're taking the other side of two deals. One deal on this side is a call option. A buyer's come along and says, you know what, I want the right to buy a Tesla at 300 on December the 21st. You go, yep, no problem. That will cost you $35 times by 100 because one contract is 100, 100 shares, $3,500. Thank you very much. Take that from him. The other side of the coin, you step over. You are now selling a contract to a guy who's buying a put option from you. And the put option is, excuse me, I'd like the right to buy. Sorry, not the right to buy. Put option was selling. I'd like the right to sell Tesla at $300 on December 21st. You go, certainly, sir, that'll cost you $36.80. He says, thank you, there's the contract, there's the money. You go, great, I've got in my trouser pocket, 3,500 bucks plus 3,680 bucks, $7,180. Very nice indeed. Okay, that goes in your inside pocket or in your, in your uh, suitcase, and you sit there and you wait. Now, what happens? Well, if Tesla sits there and that expiry, let's say it does some other stuff and the options prices are gonna change between now and then. Um, but let's say on December 21st, that thing is $300, what happens? You've got a contract that is expired worth, it's the right to buy something at 300, that's 300 now, zero, zip, nada. The right to sell something at 300, that's 300 now, zero, zip, nada. So you have made the full $35 on that times by 100, the full 36.80, the full 7,180. And that is indeed the maximum profit that you can make. Now, is that very likely? It's not that likely to have it right on the button. But either side of that, we're still looking good, right? If we, if we close at, say, 305, you've lost five bucks on one of them, the other one's uh, completely expired worthless because it's the right to, let's say with 305, the call option's got $5 worth of value, whoopie do, he paid you 35 bucks for the contract anyway. You keep 30, you keep the full of that, you're still $6,680, pretty nice. Well, pretty nice um, outcome. Same the other way around, but still pretty nice outcome. So you've got quite a wide range to move. Now let's see where your break even is. So your break even is gonna be what you received as credit, they call it a credit, what's the credit for that trade? And that's a total of $71.80, right? Times by the 100 to give us our monetary value of the credit, but $71.80 because 35 plus the 36.80 received from that call buyer, thank you, and the put buyer, thank you, and we gave them the contracts in exchange. So our break even is going to be the strike price plus or minus that $71.80. Strike price uh, $300, uh, 31, uh, $371.80 to the upside. And if we take the, uh, 7180 from 300 to 228.20 to the downside. So we get a payoff graph that looks a little bit like this. So there's our maximum payoff of 7,180. Um, anywhere between 2280 
I'll put in dollars here. This is the price, by the way, of Tesla. If you can just work out what I'm drawing here. Uh, 22, 228, 20 and 371.80, we are in the money. So we've got quite a big range there. Right? That's a big old range for us to, for the anywhere in here, we're in the money. And of course, the closest to the 300, of course, is the big, big money, seven, seven grand. But anywhere between that, we're still making money. So it gives us a massive kind of opportunity to profit. But of course, the downside is that if we do get a spike in one direction or another. Let's say we do shoot up to 400 bucks. That's not going to be great. So let's imagine it goes to $400. Ouch, that's not looking very good because the call option is going to be worth $100. Okay, we've got that here. So you know what? Let me scrub this and start this afresh for you so we can see what's going on. If we go to 400 because this is going to be clean like this. So it goes to $400, say. What's going to happen? Of course, we're going to have to pay out $100 because that is worth 100 bucks, isn't it? Because the call option, the right to buy something at 30, it's a $40, $100. We'll convert it in a minute to uh, actual cash. So we've got $100 negative on that. But don't forget, we received $71.80, didn't we? $71.80. The difference between those is, those of you who are good at maths are going to say, yes, I know exactly what that is. Uh, 22 or 20, 28, 20. So we get $28.20 back uh, uh, in the net of that. So we're actually losing $2,820, which isn't so bad, right? It isn't so bad because we paid the $10,000 out. We got the 7180 back. It isn't so bad. I mean, compared to the risk reward, and that's gone quite a long way. And if we look at the other side of the coin, so let's say we've got 200. Let's undo this. So we've got a bit more room to work with this. Chuck that back on the desk. We've got 200 bucks is the expiry price. What's happened to the put? Well, put option has is the one that's expired I in the money. The guy's definitely going to exercise the right to sell something 300 that's at 100, right? So we've lost uh, 100 bucks on that because we've got to pay that difference out. But don't forget, we still have received in the $71 uh, and 80 cents, which we know is $28.20 or minus. $2,820. So again, not too bad. So those are the kind of bad scenarios, but don't forget, of course, it could get a of a lot worse. If we're selling call options, even though we've received some premium on that, uh, if it goes to a thousand, then it could sting, right? We've got a massive unlimited risk on this if we do this, but the window of profitability is reasonable. The payoff is reasonable. Chance of it doing it is reasonable. It's done it all year. It's not a bad thesis to do. Of course, unlimited risk. There's always a payoff for something. The likelihood of success is high. The uh, kind of tail risk of, of significant damage is also there. Uh, so it's something you could potentially do if you wanted to take advantage of the fact that options are, pri are highly priced. And that's not just for Tesla, that's for anything. If you just want to sell volatility, you think, you know what, people are getting crazy here. Um, I just think we're not going to do anything. That's my thesis. As long as you're aware of the risks of this, like I said, selling that call option and selling the put option, obviously can go to zero, but even if it goes to sort of $1, it's still going to be a hefty loss. As long as you understand the concept of that, extreme risk, it might be something to consider as part of a, a trading strategy for a specific stock or commodity. All right, guys, shorting volatility, Tesla option trading strategies. Take care. Whatever you do, the next one. Bye-bye.